Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Next Stop Nonstop podcast. My name is Erica and I'm your host. On today's episode, I brought together some of my favorite flight attendants here to discuss the benefits and challenges of travel and romance. Next Up Nonstop is the travel and lifestyle podcast that promotes the importance of traveling and mental wellness for millennial women. We discuss everything from travel to dating and careers to mental health. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast are for entertainment purposes only. All right, so let's get into it, shall we? So today, I actually brought a few of the beautiful flight attendants that you see here, and we are going to talk about some travel and romance, the benefits, the challenges, the real, the, the crazy. We're going to get into it today. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start to introduce everybody. We'll start with Miss Kelly. Let the people Hi, know who everyone. you are. I'm Kelly. I've been a flight attendant for going on seven years now, and I'm here. Ready to have a good time. Let's talk about some travel and romance. Yeah. Where are you based? I'm based in Dallas, Washington, Dallas. Love it. <laughs> All right. I was going to say, Elon, I see that face. Go ahead. You're next. <laughs> All right. So my name is Elon, or also Lonnie. I'm a flight attendant as well for seven years, too, in Dallas. I don't know how yeah. we've never met, but <laughs> I did just transfer to Houston, so I leave Dallas on June 1st. I'm kind of sad to go, but it's for the best. It's just a better commute for me. So I'm that's all. That. Yeah. All right. Perfect. And the beautiful mom. Um, I have been a flight attendant for three years, and I'm born, raised, and based in New York. Talk to him. What part of New York? Queens. I love Queens. I used to live in, in uh, not Jamaica. What is it called? Woodhaven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, Devon, how about you? Hey, guys. I'm Devon. I'm Boston-based. I'm a flight attendant. Um, I'm from Charlotte. Not born and raised, but that's where I'm <laughs> at now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, been a flight attendant for four years in October. Love it. All right, ladies. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to get to some good stuff, and I'm curious to see what you guys are going to say. So be honest as you want, but uh, don't reveal too much, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Devon, we're going to start with you. What are some of the qualities you look for in a partner? Hmm. So easygoing, mm -hmm. ambitious. Right. So I think too, being in this job, you know, a lot of men don't understand it. So I think that was the biggest thing. Like I had to choose somebody who understood and wasn't going yes. to be like a burden or like being like annoying while I'm gone. Yeah. Who I can trust while I'm away. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all have done the long distance dating since we've had this job, but baby, let me tell you, it was rough. Yes. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, yeah. To think about that a little bit, my husband travels like seventy five percent for work too. So when we <laughs> met, we were kind of like, "Oh, this is perfect." So he'll be gone for like a week or two weeks at a time. So if I'm off, okay, I'll just fly out to LA and sit in your mm -hmm. hotel room while you at work, and then you know, it's like it it, right. it works. Yeah. Yes. So Lonnie, next question is for you. Have you ever dated someone long term that you met on the plane? If so, how did that go? I have never dated anyone from the plane. No, I'm surprised. No, I've never exchanged like even two numbers. And one guy tried to like front on me like I wasn't that girl. And yeah. then when it was trying to pop up months later, I was like, no, boo. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, you no. did. You already yeah. missed Moments you. passed. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm surprised. Anybody else? Not on the plane, but that's how I met my husband in the airport. Oh, okay. wow. I like I was, I was at husband, work. honey. At she work. met the husband yeah. in the airport. Well, it worked out. <laughs> yeah, I was a Chick Fil A child. He walked right on up. Yeah, he asked me on a date, so he was going away, and I was going away, obviously for work. And mm -hmm. then that weekend, we were both back in the DC area, and just decided to meet up mm -hmm. for drinks. We kind of been together ever since then. Oh, I love that. Love. Very serendipitous. <laughs> you better say it. Yeah, I love that. Now, I don't. I've I've dated a couple people long term in the past um, almost eight years from the plane, and I I don't mind sliding the number quick. Okay, so that's my thing. And so I'm like, I, I think it's real cute. But uh, all right. So let's go. Next question is for Kelly. Is it a requirement that your partner love to travel? Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I I can't we, I can't be on the couch with you. We, we can't sit on the couch. All day. <laughs> Not the couch we got though. we got to go somewhere. Yeah, you know, I, and I 
I will say that sometimes when you come home from work, you do just kind of want that day or two to like yeah. decompress. For sure. But after that, I get, I get, it feels weird like being at home for too long. I'm like, okay, all right, it's day four. What are we going to do if I'm not going <laughs> to work? Going? Are we going somewhere? <laughs> what are we doing here? Because I just can't sit still too long anymore. And that, that started with this job. So yeah, even if it's just up the road, he's from New Jersey. So even if we're just taking a little two hour, three hour nice. road trip to change of scenery, we got to do something. Yeah, I like that. Anybody else agree with that? Definitely agree with that. 100%. Yeah, I'm like the opposite. Me, I'm the I'm opposite to <laughs> Tell me about that. Opposite too. Oh my gosh. I didn't even know I was a homebody until I started this job because mm-hmm. now when I'm off, I'm off. I That's don't want to be at the airport at all. <laughs> like, so. I don't even have I a job at this point, right? Trip, but... <laughs> Man, I'll me take too. a road trip any day, but I can. I have to stay away from, from the airport. From the airport. I but also, it. you commute. That's a job mm-hmm. in itself, and I see yeah, why. That's, that's a, That makes a difference. Mm-hmm. That makes a difference. I have no excuse. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good because I feel like I'm a homebody too. Go ahead. All right, I live five minutes from the airport, but I do not. Like, let me tell you something. When I'm home, I am home. That's so if my partner didn't want to travel, I wouldn't be that upset about it. Yeah. Like every now and then we would have to like go somewhere. But if you didn't want mm-hmm. to, I'm going to go regardless. Yeah, but I, I, can, love- I can say a home every day. I've been off for two weeks. I ain't been outside this state. No way. <laughs> I do want to start using my benefits more though like because I yeah. really don't use it that much so I yeah. am trying to like get out the habit of that because I am such a homebody so no I feel that absolutely yeah. all right now Devon do you travel with your boo and if so where's the last place you guys went I have before we haven't traveled lately because our son he's so new um, but the Miami. last place that we went is Miami okay better Miami mm-hmm. it up okay <laughs> <laughs> and that was when I was pregnant. So we need to go. Oh, we had like somewhere. a baby mother. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cute. Yeah, I like that. Soon. Okay. Yeah. Now, Merm, though, how long do you wait to put somebody on your passes? I know you just talked about the benefits. Honey. Um, <laughs> I don't put, we got, we have to be damn near on the path to engagement for me to put you on my path. Like we have to, (laughs) my past, we have to really be like really serious and committed because that is a gift of travel. And I think that I know a lot of women that just pass it out to anyone they're dating just so they can have someone to travel with. To travel with. But in all actuality, like that is such a like monumental gift that everyone does not deserve that. Like, we could get some buddy passes. We could go to Spirit, you know, get a little cheaper <laughs> ticket. Like, but to, spirit, be my, though. to be on my buddy pass, yeah. no, I mean, on my companion pass, yeah. that would take a lot of um, love and just trials and tribulations that we would have had to have gone Look through. at that face. She is cheap at that. You see that face? <laughs> okay. So. You said you're guilty? <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'll throw you on a pass quick because all we got to do is no! press deactivate. Well, deactivate. I feel that. Yeah. But see, I, no, mean, I, don't, I don't know about that. I not, not, maybe not everybody. Especially, I just feel like because travel is such a gift and I mean, like, if I like you, if we're vibing, yeah. why not give you an opportunity? And I know that that's what I want in the long term to be traveling with you for potentially a lifetime. Let's see how yeah. it works early on so we don't have to waste our time. Yeah. yeah, that's a good look at it. I never thought about it like that. And then, like I said, if you act up, deactivate. Yeah. <laughs> if you act up, go ahead. <laughs> we'll try again <laughs> next year. <laughs> that's the thing. You have to wait until next year. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Because, like, say if, say if we don't work out, I have you on my pass. Now I have to wait a whole nother year, like, to give that to somebody more deserving. So it's like, for me, it's like, I got to mm-hmm. kind of like, I got to make sure you're like, I'm worth serious. Because I don't like to date people. I be, you know, sometimes we be dating questionable people. So Damn. you better say that. Okay. I'm like, you cute, but you not that bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mer, I'm going to actually stay with you right now. So do you think it will be difficult for someone to spoil you or impress you with traveling hotels as a flight attendant? No. Because okay. I'm so easy to please. <laughs> I'm so easy to please that I'm any, amount of, any amount of effort done, I'm just yeah. like, oh, my God. You know, like, if it's a hotel, if it's nice, because I'm really, like, bougie when it comes to hotels. If you, like, put yeah. effort into it and it's, like, a really nice hotel and, like, you went out your way to, like, get your own ticket for me to make sure I yeah. got on the flight. You know, I'm, a, I'm easy to please. But okay. no, it's not hard to impress me at all. 
I like that. All right, now, mm. Kelly, have you ever received relationship advice from a flight attendant during jump seat therapy? And if so, what was it? All the time. I don't. I feel like we, as flight attendants, just get on the jump seat and start talking about our lives <laughs> way more yeah. often than we should. Yeah, so you hear all funny. sorts of little tidbits, and all of it is not sensible. <laughs> and you know, like you're listening, and you're like, oh, what are you talking about? Or you yeah. think that you like someone, and then you start hearing about their life outside of the job, and you're like, mm-hmm. okay, this person is probably not someone I would take with me. Hang out with her. I swear, yeah. take with me, though. But seriously, like, there's been good advice, there's been bad advice, there's yeah. been the in between, but we, we really kind of just talk about anything and everything sitting on the jump seat, I guess, because there's nothing else to do in the yeah. you know, between it's- service or whatever. Is there anything memorable? Uh, any relationship advice you remember? Oh, man. Not necessarily advice, but I remember this one. T- <laughs> the uh, young lady was telling me about the relationship that she was in and that she found out that he had used her passes. Well, here Uh-oh. we go. But I was like, oh. Oh. Back to the last question. <laughs> And he had used her passes to meet some other girl. And she was like, should I take him back? Should I, what? you know, like it was a mistake or he's saying, I was like, um, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm the wrong person to ask because wow. I'm a little petty. I, leave me out of it. But <laughs> that's, yeah. She was asking me for advice, I guess. I was like, girl, no, don't. Let's not. Yeah. Move that's on. a re- that's a real thing though, and uh, kind of mm-hmm. to go back to that last question, that's that's a huge issue. You got somebody traveling back and forth, going wherever they want, and all of a sudden they see a little new booty over there, and they're like, "Hey, right, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just out here flying for free. She don't got no, okay. no, thank you, no, thank you. I'm gonna pass on that." <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Alani, would you ever date a flight attendant? Why or why not? Oh, no, ma'am. No flight attendants, no pilots. Oh, no, no, no. The reason being, like, you know, the I don't, where I eat, mm. there's that. Mm-hmm. Then our industry can be just a little catty, a little messy. Word gets around mm-hmm. too fast. People be all in your business. They think they have a right to your business. And no, you don't. Like, you don't. No, it's I hear it. for me. No, thanks. No, I feel that. Merm, would you ever date a pilot? Why or why not? Um, yeah, huh? Uh huh. A little different when you think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, a pilot. Um, wow. okay. oh, you know. <laughs> Ideally, I wouldn't want to because I have the same mindset. Like, I don't want to date anyone that I have yeah. to work with. And yeah. pilots have bad reps. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. But I mean, Can you talk, talk, talk a little about that for the people who don't know? I've been hearing pilots be having families in Boca Tai and like all Baby. that child. <laughs> but if I meet the right person and he happens to be a pilot i'm not opposed to it a yeah. flight attendant no absolutely not but if i mean a pilot and he have you know we're vibing and he's a good guy i'll give him a chance for, not even for somebody who works for a different airline than you ideally though it would be nice to date a, a flight attendant because y'all can both travel yes that's what i was thinking it's the, the benefit i mean but the flight attendant men that I know, they just have, they just, they just put a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. Like, even my male friends, I'm like, you know what? This is why I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and if you really want to see them at work and at home. Well, if don't they know. don't work for like the same airline, airline, you might not see them. Like, all right, babe, I missed you. I'm back. Yeah, I don't know. But some people make it work. Like, what if they work, what if they work for so a small. separate, There's for a different who... airline? That's yeah. Wait, what? I'm still a no What if they work for a different airline? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. That's really funny, y'all. Oh my gosh. All right. That's so a no for me too. That's a, that's a no for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Devon. Would you ever date someone who lived in a different state or country? Explain. Look at that smile. Why should smile <laughs> like that? Because <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, I guess I guess I would. Not in another country. In another state, sure. But we have to be on like the same coast. Okay. So that we're not too far. That. that that time difference is that's yeah. the killer right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, All right. But like, so, if I you know like lived in Boston and my mm-hmm. boyfriend like just like lived in Charlotte, I think we could make it work because it's like he's on my passes, you know. So we can we can meet in the middle. I can go down there. Mm-hmm. He can come up here. So you know. Okay. You see them passes keep coming back and forth. Y'all hear that pass. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got me just thinking. Say, you can I'm make just it saying, work. okay? <laughs> it would be different if you two had like a regular job and you had to yeah. actually like pull out the big bucks to go see them. To, to actually get that fight. Yeah. yeah. That is a, a big difference for sure. 
All right, Kelly, would you consider a long term, uh, a long distance relationship? And do you think they are sustainable? Not in the long term. Mm -hmm. I think when you're that maybe that first year, year and a half, when you're still kind of getting to know each other, you can yeah. make it work a little bit. But a long term relationship, you probably need to be, if not under the same roof, at least in the yeah. same city. Yeah, like, I that's would agree just, with that. That's just me. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? I agree. I yep. think in the beginning, it could definitely work out. Like I've done long distance mm -hmm. relationships, but ultimately you guys have to, if you want to grow and build, you guys have to be in the same place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, Lonnie. So have you ever had a potential partner have preconceived notions about flight attendants? And if oh. so, what were they? Oh, yes. You know, the typical, uh, we have men in different cities. Yes. I, like, I, I'm like, come on now. We're working a, a hard job, a hard job. Like, we have some long days. You mm -hmm. really think, now, maybe, if, well, okay, let me be clear. I know a couple of senior moms, honey. They Hello. Like here. Listen. Now, at a point in my life, wasn't like that. Not every city, but, you know, it was, yeah. I had fun. You know, I was, you know, Listen to you. She, she tried to I, sugarcoat I it for us. Okay. My life. But I mean, also, you know, when you're actually like thinking about being serious with someone, like yeah. you're like, all that goes out the window. And then now it's been seven years that I've been here. Like that, it ain't really all that fun anymore. I'm tired mm. when I get to the layover. Like, right. you know, but it's always, always the same thing. Like you have all these men here, there, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't. Like, I yeah. don't. Like, I, I, I would agree with that. I think even when I was like, like really ready to be dating and out here in these, you know, in these streets. Right. I think it's so hard to do because even if you are traveling a lot, you really don't necessarily go to the same places often. Right. You know, if you're on reserve, you have no clue where you're you going. You have no clue. But, you know what I'm saying? And if you're like maybe, well, I mean, anyway, like me, when I um, create my schedule, I'm not thinking, oh, I want to go to Atlanta this week and I want to go to wherever. I'm just thinking, okay, what days I need off? Where, you know, right. where, where, how can right. I make my schedule the same way? You know what I mean? So it's, it really doesn't matter where I'm at. So I think it, it's interesting the idea of the flight attendants. And right. I'm sure it was probably like that when you had 37 hour layovers and somewhere right. and you go there the same place every week or whatever the case is. And it might work like that. Um, you know, right. for some of these, uh, international mommies, you know, out here right. going to Lisbon every Tuesday In or whatever, Spain, right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's fine, <laughs> but that's not, that's not regular. I don't think right anymore anyway. Yeah. So definitely agree. Yeah, so that's interesting. But uh, let's see. Oh, Merm, I got a good one for you. So okay. have you ever met a sugar daddy on the plane? If so, oh. how did that go? And if not, would you like to? <laughs> so I haven't. I've been looking every day I go on trips. Like, <laughs> I've been doing LA's. I've been doing trans times. I can't yeah. find one. I feel like that, if you were to, that would be the place to do it. So I've been having first class. I can't find one. But you know what my problem is? I want to be a sugar baby, but I don't want to give out no sugar. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, you better say that. That's where I'm at, though. I want the ones that just want some, you know, some quality time. Right. little cuddle. Yeah, but once you start asking for sugar, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out. <laughs> I ain't that brave. Mm -mm. Pass out though. I'm gonna pass listen, out. Listen, I feel that because I mean, I every time I'm on a flight, I'm like, hmm, who we got in here? I'm usually right. purser, so I'm like, I be looking at the door, I'm like, mm -hmm, okay, I see you. I, see, I don't know. Right. Go ahead and walk right. past you one time, right? And then when you actually think about it, I'm like, I, I, I can't. Like I can't. I just can't. Right. Like once it's once the it visual gets down for to me. It, I'm like thinking. I'm like, how, like it's all it's wrinkly. I can't. It's a lot. But you never. I mean, these new. These new older fellas out here today don't look like they used to. A 60-year-old right. don't look like You're a 60-year-old right. when I was growing up. You right. Now, you know, I see some 60-year-olds. I'm like, Jesus. Okay, 60, I see you. I can, I can work with 60. No, in shape, in shape 60. Okay. <laughs> you know, look, I'm like, yourself 60. I can do that, <laughs> but I haven't met one yet. Yeah. No, I feel that. Anybody else? Anybody else looking for a sugar daddy? Why not Kelly? Don't say nothing. She married. <laughs> well, in my <laughs> past life. <laughs> yes, in my past life. <laughs> I love it. Y'all are so silly. So actually, Kelly, since I was talking to you, let's stick with you for a second. Do you want kids? If so, have you thought about what that looks like as a working mom, uh, working as flight attendant mom? Yeah, we uh, we want kids. Um, I think I would definitely want to take like at least the first year off if that's manageable financially. Yeah. You yeah. know, just that first year where, okay, like I'm those early years where you're trying to make sure that the kid knows who you are <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and, yeah. and then eventually maybe work turns or at the most a yeah. two day 
So I'm, yeah. I'm not gone for too long. And then maybe when they're middle school to teenage years, I can go back to what I usually like to work. I think everything with this job will, and forming a family, forming relationships in general, is just kind of trial and error. You got to figure out what yeah. works oh, yeah. for your particular situation. Absolutely. And Devon is a new mommy. How do you feel about that? Coming back to work and kind of getting get going, scheduling and stuff. I was not ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I figured um, that. It's hard. Yeah, it is hard. I try to um, balance my days, you know, three days on, three days off or, you mm-hmm. know, I just try to make sure I get the maximum amount of hours that I can yeah. and be home the maximum amount of hours that I can. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's tough being away from your kid. I mean, I FaceTime him like every day, but um, it's one of those things where you do want to remember, you want them to remember your face, but also like you have to make sure you have a roof up your head and yeah. you know that, you know, insurance is a lot. So mm-hmm. that was and baby, uh, and even with that, you just need a break. You like, you got a brand yeah. new baby at the house. You're like, I just need some space for a second. Okay. <laughs> so I totally, which I have that. today because Good. he's down there at his grandmother's house. So okay. I'm just, I, I'm thank, you, yeah. <laughs> right. thank you, grandma. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love that. All right. So, Merm, has Abu ever tried to discourage you from being a flight attendant? No. Mine's actually, when I got when I got the um, offer, I didn't know if I wanted to be one. I'm like, uh, do I really want to do this? Like, it's a different lifestyle. And he's actually the one that, like, convinced me, like, girl, what are you doing? Like, you're going to travel for free. Your family's going to travel for free. You're yep. going to see all these different places. Like, do it. So yeah. never discourage me. I, that's a red flag to me. That anyone discourages Absolutely. you from a job or like a career that's like, you know, it's safe, it's fun, it's new. Mm, that's a red flag. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I actually dated a guy and it was around the time when I was actually deciding. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do this. This is kind of like, it's for me, it was like crazy and exciting. I'm like, I think I might have traveled twice prior to becoming a flight attendant. Yeah. And I never went out of the country. So I was like, oh, Lord, like, you know, what am I going to do? And I'm talking to him. He's like, nah, I need you home every night. You can't do that. And I'm like, you see, Mm-mm. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, nah, I'm, I think I'm like, just because you said that now, I'm right. going to go. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah, so it's, you got to watch out for that because most of the time, and I feel like that's just in any aspect of life, somebody is trying to hold you back for whatever they exactly. feel. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That's not, that's not a good sign at all. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, Lonnie, does the time away from your partner benefit the relationship? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I really think so. Because we're, when we're together, we're like this. Like, we're yeah. both like, very affectionate, like super cuddly, Aww. you know. That's all cute. That. And then it's like we have that time apart. And it's like, oh, welcome yeah. back. <laughs> so, and especially for me, like, I, I don't know. I'm kind of like that in between. Like, I love doing stuff. I love being outside, but I love being at home. But, yeah. like, I don't know. So it's just, I don't know. I just need that time to just, you know, just to miss him a little bit, you know. And it doesn't take long, but. Yeah, I look like at you. Time. Look at how she's smiling when she think about him. Look at that. <laughs> right. She also works from home. So it's like when I am home, it's like I never really get to have like home to myself that often. So then my layovers are kind of like my little bit of time yes. to myself. Yeah. You know? time. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. All right. Perfect. So I think we kind of touched on it, but I want to go back to you, Kelly. Have you ever had a partner be insecure about you traveling so often? Yeah, not my marriage, but the relationship that I was in when I first started this job. Um, Mm. We were together for maybe like a year and a half before I even became a flight attendant. So it was a change. It was a complete, you know, 180 for what our relationship looked like because I was no longer living where we lived. I moved up to Dulles for the job. So now, you know, I'm sitting on reserve and going home when I'm not on reserve. So whatever, six days up here, six days down there, still trying to make it work. And of course, when you're gone for a week and they have no idea what you've been up to, kind of, because, you know, I'm not we're not sitting on the phone all day while I'm up here. Yeah. yeah. I guess that mind starts to wander. A little bit. Yeah. You know, what, where are you? What are you doing? I, I, I don't have my eyes on you or at least yeah. know where you are every minute of the day. So, I mean, 
I won't say that this job ruined that relationship, but this job ruined that relationship. Oh, and I don't even think it's not the job. <laughs> but, but it's not the, it's the guy. Have you have to have somebody right. who's confident, you right. know what I mean? And trust mm-hmm. you because that's if you, and I think that's kind of really the point of this of this discussion. Uh, if you're flying, whether you're a flight attendant, a pilot, if you're in the aviation industry or you just like to travel often, if you have a partner and they don't trust you, baby, it's not going to work. You know, right. It don't matter where you go. You could be next to them. And they don't trust you. It's not going to work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that's one of the, the, the biggest things that I've learned for sure. So Alani, did the pandemic affect your relationship at all? So my relationship started during the pandemic. But being in yes. Houston, the world was open. You know, Houston never really closed. So Texas we, you know, we were Texas. <laughs> yeah, we were still able to like go on dates and kind of still have like a normal relationship. So it didn't really mess up. Plus we met closer to the it's still not over technically i guess no it is not but you know (laughs) what we considered over is when we met so i don't know it was kind of normal for us okay anybody else right it was good well it was good to be relationship wise it was good we got to spend a lot of time together so and then i went on um ploc for like two months so it was like a lot of bonding time for me so it was it was good yeah that's nice yeah i love that all right, so Merm, actually, I'm gonna stay with you. How do you feel about writing your number on a napkin and sliding it to a passenger? I'm not mad at that. <laughs> I haven't done it because I'm such a punk, but I know a lot of people that what? have done it. I know I do yeah. not, yeah, I do not approach guys. I'm such a punk. I, I am know. So shocked. Everybody says that, and I don't understand why. I'm such a punk. But if I did, it would definitely be the number on a napkin. Because yeah. I don't have to talk. You can call me if you want and don't call me. Right. It's yeah. not to be awkward. Here, take this napkin with your Coke and that's it. I've seen people do it and <laughs> I think it's so cute. Say, right. Yeah. I think it's yeah. so cute, but I haven't done it yet. So, yeah. so no. funny story. I was working and I was trying to give the number to the gate agent wherever we were. He was like, yeah. hey, let me get your number real quick. So I wrote it on a napkin and I was like, oh, let me give this drink out real quick. I'll be right back. I accidentally gave the number <gasps> to the gate. Oh, <laughs> no. Did they and I call realized you? right away, I was, no, they didn't. Um, I realized right away, I was like, oh, let me get this napkin back real quick. Oh, good, good, good. I, <laughs> oh, my God. Like, well, that could have. End it very bad. Could have went Could you imagine? Like, Why she take my napkin? No, just be careful when you when you give out your number on a napkin. Make right. sure you're giving it who you meant. <laughs> so I'm the queen of the the number on the napkin situation, right? So what I tend to do, like I'm a, I'm gonna watch you the whole flight. I'm gonna see you coming in. I'm a, and then I'm a like, all right, I'm gonna figure out when I'm gonna do it. Most of the time, it's at the end of the flight, and I'm like, oh, you That's know what? Smart. I forgot to hand you this. Boom. And then they just kind of like look at me, they giggle, and they go ahead, and then they be like, oh, you you mean it? <laughs> this is your number? Blah blah blah. I'm like, mm-hmm, I did that. And you know, <laughs> love it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I love that. I think it's a, I think it's really cute, and it, it gives them the option. It still allows you to say, "I'm oh like I'm interested," but it puts the ball in court, right? So Devon, would you ever trade into the purser position or lead position while your boo is traveling with you just to impress them? No, <laughs> I, would, I would stay in the opposite cabin. Like, oh my god, the opposite. Oh my god, <laughs> me too. I, what? Like, I'm just like, I do. He already knows that I'm goofy and it doesn't matter how long we've been dating. I'm always going to like be shy in a way. And especially if I'm working, because now you're like, not only are you sitting there watching what I'm doing, but you're probably giggling and laughing at me too. Now you can't take me seriously. Mm-hmm. I've been and spilt my drink, like spilt oh his drink God. on him. I can't. Y'all are so like, I'll funny. See you I on did the not ground. expect that. I did not expect that at all. Anybody yeah, else? No, that's, <laughs> that's true for me too. Yeah, like I try to be in the opposite cavern of wherever he's flying when he comes to work with me. Because like if I look at him, he's giggling at me. I'm like, I'm gonna start giggling. Right. Just try to like maintain some level of professionalism oh while he's there. Oh my god. I didn't even think about all of that. He'll be on yeah. my first flight uh, later this month that I'm wow. working. I don't even think about oh, all of that. I'm, I'm, that. I'm like, oh, I'm messed her up now. Rumbling the drink. <laughs> right and like if he's sitting next to someone and I call that person sir and I don't call him um, if he starts giggling like it's just a weird, oh, right. it's weird. that's funny no I don't yeah. I don't think that's the Stay issue away. I feel like well most of the time I don't have to trade into it but like if I'm already in the position I mean I wouldn't trade mm-hmm. definitely wouldn't trade into it but I'm you know if I'm already in the position I would be like all right now, now you see what I'm doing out here. And I'm right. like, this is this is mine. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To I me, it gives it. me like that little bump of confidence. Like, I'm, I'm on mine. 
me. This is me. Right. So I don't know. I think that's, that's how it I should be. Not yeah. expect that. <laughs> I did not expect that answer. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it should be. But me, I'm going to the opposite cabin. Yeah. It. That's how Please don't look at me, boo. Please. <laughs> don't look at me. Don't. Like, that's my favorite position anyway. Like, I'm staying in the galley. Like, right. Okay. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask this as a general question to anybody who wants to answer. We can have multiple answers for it. But what does your dream vacation look like? Anybody? A balcony? <laughs> oh, hey, you better say that. <laughs> Ooh. It would have to be sun. It has to be somewhere hot and sunny. sunny. Mm-hmm. It has to be a balcony for obvious reasons and for chill mm-hmm. reasons. Look, look, look. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> what else? I don't know what else. See, now, I like where you're going with that. See, now, okay, <laughs> when I think of something like that, I'm thinking Maui, right? So you have mm-hmm. all the lush green, like the mountains, yeah. the beach, the air. Oh, my. See, now that balcony yeah. situation. Now, I, I can get with that. Okay, so take I'm me saying. to Maui. Let's see what happens. Let's see what we're doing. <laughs> Ooh, a little swim up pool. I haven't done a swim up pool. Hotel that would be nice. Yes. Or the thing, okay, I don't know if this is just in Bali, but you know how they have, like, the fruits and stuff on a tray? And, yes. Like, yes. Oh, my yes. God. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. Couples massages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like, somewhere yeah. secluded. Yeah. 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 So a private villa, yeah. if you will. Yeah. A little villa, yeah. if you will. Villa, villa <laughs> me, honey. <laughs> villa me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right. So, Kelly, does your hubby ever meet you on a layover? Yes. Yeah. A lot of times he'll come to work oh. with me. Um, in the March, we went to Dublin. Uh, and I was working, so okay. you know, he'd never been yeah. to Ireland before. He said that was one of the no. things he wanted to do. So there was room both ways. He got first class going. Better. Yeah. So he's, um, See, now that's the benefit we was talking about, y'all. That is the benefit. Right, that is. Okay. That, that, <laughs> yeah. is that is. But before, it would happen a lot more often, obviously, before the pandemic. He'd come yeah. to work with me much more often just because now you got to get the COVID test on the way back yeah. in. So it's a little bit more yeah. hectic. But, but yeah, Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, for anybody else, is it difficult to actually find time to date and enjoy spending time with your boo? Oh, no. No, no, I'm making a priority. No, no. Yeah, no. there you go. You better say that. Yeah. So, is it more so? Um, is it like the scheduling? Are you guys able to like schedule in advance? Like, tell the people kind of how that works for you and how you set that up to make sure it's a priority. Um, usually not too far in advance. Like our our anniversary or anything that's special, we do plan mm-hmm. in advance just so he knows. Like, okay, like I want to make sure that you get this day off. Mm-hmm. But normally, I try to always be off on the weekends anyway. So you know, we don't go out every single weekend. But there are weekends where we're like oh, just spontaneous, like, hey, let's go have brunch or let's go do mm-hmm. this, let's go do that, or even just at our neighborhood and we just go down to the pool. Like later today, we'll go down to the pool or whatever because I'm off and just hang out. You know, just vibe out. We have mm-hmm. shows we watch together at nighttime. Just on some chill stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. food, have a few drinks and just chill. So I think we do really. So you good. make it work within the schedule that you have. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna okay. enjoy life, honey. You okay, can- okay. Hey, nothing. Reserve or nothing. Okay, you wanna live? <laughs> I love that. Anybody yeah, that's else? Sort of what we do. Um, mm-hmm. So when I'm home, we we usually cook dinner like every night, and when the baby is asleep, we just you know have like a movie night. Um, eat dinner, have drinks, and watch TV. Yeah. So even if we're not going out, we're still getting that quality time in the house. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's and, you what know, matters. I, th- I think it's funny because when you, well, when I was thinking about flight attendants before, just people in the aviation industry, you don't think like you just being home, just chilling, cooking dinner, right. having, you know, the weekends and stuff. So I think it's very interesting to hear that part of it for other, you know, for other people who might even want to just become a flight attendant. So right. I like that. It definitely depends on the airline um, and like your flexibility and stuff. So mm-hmm. a lot of people think I'm always out. I am always home and I'm only three years <laughs> in. I am <laughs> always home. So I think it really depends on the airline and their scheduling yeah. um, operation because you can be home if you want to be home. Yeah. No yeah. joke. And I think one of the really good things about the shop is like when you're off, you're just truly off. I don't yeah, you're I truly do not off. think about my airline when I yep. am at home. Right. Unless it's time to schedule the next month or figure yeah. out when I'm going to work next, you know? Yeah, so absolutely. I really truly just have the time as long as you give me enough time in advance to plan it. You tell me, mm-hmm. okay, on the sixteenth we got something to do. All right, well make sure I have that day off and it's truly an off day. Yeah. 
I can mm-hmm. trade, I can do this. And I think that's mm-hmm. the, another part of even working with the relationships. This industry can be and is very flexible, I would say. Exactly. I mean, you might have a little bit more trouble in reserve sometimes, yeah. but generally I think it's super flexible. Mm-hmm. I think maybe I might work 10 to 12 days a month and that's like my regular, right? Yeah. So regular. whereas you have somebody who's working what? What is that? Like 20 days, something like that yeah. a month. And I'm like, I'm, I, I, will, I, I don't want to say never. I have no plans on ever yeah. going back to a regular nine to five job. Not ever. Yeah, me either. Yeah. yeah it's hard. I did so it what for did you... a few months during the pandemic and it's, it's awful. Same, same, same. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. yeah. What did you do prior um, to becoming flight attendants? I worked for the state of Texas doing <laughs> investigations and inspections in daycares. Oh, wow. Okay. Very interesting. Okay. Right. Yeah, Lonnie, how about uh, you? So I was a teacher and I also did behavioral therapy for kids with autism. Wow. Which I did love, but I yeah. wanted to see the world. So I was like, bye, kids. <laughs> <laughs> bye, my babies. I got to go. Bye. Mommy, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Devon, how about you? I was working part time at Target and I was also a full time student and doing okay. internship. Oh, so you was all busy. that. You was always busy. Okay. <laughs> no, that makes right. sense. Did you ever yeah. finish? Get to finish school? Yeah, I finished. Okay. I yeah. like I didn't have anything lined up after I graduated college. And my friend who was already working, she was like, um, the applications are open. Like, go ahead and apply. I'll write your letter of recommendation. So like two months after I graduated, I applied and got the job straight out. So nice. it was just lined up for me perfectly lined up, man. oh that's beautiful yeah and mm-hmm. Merm, how about you what did you do prior i was a manager at pink victoria's secret yes it was, no it was horrible oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> but I, lo- I love i love my employees and my customers yeah. but the job itself like people think flight attendant jobs like they do the stuff that people do in retail is yeah. crazy like, those customers are so entitled yeah so yeah yeah and there's no flexibility there was no flexibility And that's the problem. And that's the problem. So before I was in the hotel industry and I worked retail and then I got into, I don't want to say corporate, but I worked at a uh, plastic surgery center and I was working in the billing billing department. Right. So then I was like, there's no, I mean, when you talk about no flexibility, baby, there is nothing. You are the only person in the department that's doing something. You had to be there every day, all day. Don't take Mm -hmm. no vacation. (laughs) So I was like, I can't, I was like, all right, it's time to go. Trying to get out of here. Yeah. So that's wonderful. I want to say thank you guys so much. I want to ask everybody one question before we kind of wrap it up. Now, do you guys have any recommendations for flight attendants or individuals that travel often and are having challenges finding or sustaining a relationship? Merm, let's start with you. I think that the right person, I think that, I think that a person will find their person. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that a person will find their person. I don't think that a person should be with someone who doesn't understand the job, who can't understand the job, um, who doesn't understand distance. Someone look for someone that's secure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just think the the right person will will come. Right. In my opinion, I would agree with that, Kelly. What do you think? I would completely agree with that. I think there's somebody for everybody that person that understands the job or not even maybe even understands the job, but likes you enough to try to understand the job. Right. Yeah. Wants to get to know you enough to, to persevere. And like, maybe it's going to be hard sometimes, but you know what? I really like this person. I'm down for this person. I'm going to figure out how to make it work. Mm -hmm. I love that. Lonnie. Um, I think it all starts in the vetting process, you know, run that trial and error. You know, you take that trip, see how they act while you gone, see how they act when you come back. (laughs) Mm-hmm. They're acting up. Don't ignore the red flag. Just keep yes. it. You will find that person that's for you, that person mm-hmm. that understands, the person that's going to work with you, they're going to come with you. Or they, even if they don't want to come, they're just fine with you going and doing it on your own. Like, mm-hmm. all of right. them, you got to figure out what works for you and what works for the other person and just make it work mm-hmm. together. Yeah. I would agree with that. Devon, what do you think? Um, I would say, first of all, don't look for a partner. Okay. Um, I think things happen, you know, when you're not looking for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you'll find that person that can understand you and your lifestyle. And, you know, like everyone was saying, you know, if you see those red flags, then, you know, actually pay attention and get out while you're ahead. 
Yeah. Right. Don't wait till like, <laughs> don't wait till, you know, the relationship goes up in flames and now you're yeah. like debating if you even want to be a flight attendant anymore because of the relationship you have. Yeah, mm-hmm. crazy. When I first got hired, they were like, don't you ever quit. Yes. Don't let nobody yeah. make you quit yeah. this job. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. And then I, I realized at a certain point, you're like, mm-hmm. I will never Yes. I, I, even if I wanted to do something else, I'm like, right. I will still have this. You take a cola, you know, you got to do whatever you got to do. Right. Don't quit that job. I'm still yeah. working at least once a week. Hello. Okay. I'm working up to keep them, keep them benefits. Once a you month. Know what I mean? Right. Once a month. Once yeah, a month. It's all about the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's real though. So I want to tell you guys that I totally and, and completely enjoy this conversation today. So Kelly, you want to tell everybody where they can find you? Well, if you are so inclined, at Kelly Kelly Bobelli on Instagram. There ain't nothing going on on there. That's so cute. (laughs) Not nothing going on. You don't post any travel pics or nothing, no? Um, Here and there, yeah. I mean, you can see my travels on there for sure. Okay. Okay, cool. And Lonnie, how about you? I am on Instagram at LonnieLand underscore. Spell it for us. Spell it for us. L-O-N-N-I-E-L-A-N-D underscore. All right, cool. So not, none of the extra special things on the end. Nothing like that. Nothing special. <laughs> the underscore was forced on me because somebody already had Lonnie Land. Okay. <laughs> All right. I hear that. I hear it. <laughs> Devon, how about you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at the letter U, love, L-O-V-E, underscore, dev, D-E-V. Love it. All right. And Miss Merm, talk to us. Find me on Instagram at merm.v and on TikTok, fly with Merm. Love it. All right. Well, thank you so much. And these beautiful ladies, I'm telling you, we had a good time today. This was and good. if you this guys want to see them again, you let me know. All right. So <laughs> once again, <laughs> we'll see you for the next episode of the Next Stop Nonstop podcast. And to my Next Stop Nonstop family, I want to remind you that as a new podcast, it's extremely helpful when our listeners write a review on iTunes and repost the episode or website link so that we can grow our Next Stop Nonstop family. I want to truly thank you all so much for tuning in today. All new episodes of the Next Stop Nonstop podcast will release every Tuesday, so keep an eye out. Make sure to tag at Next Stop Nonstop in any of your comments, if you have any topic suggestions, or if you just have a question for me. At Next Stop Nonstop can be found on all social media. Also, be sure to sign up for our Next Stop Nonstop newsletter, and you can find that on our website at www.nextstopnonstop.com. And that's just to stay up to date with any episode releases or any fun goodies I might have on the way. So until we meet again, I want to wish you healthy minds and happy travels. Mm -hmm.